We are looking through the book of James, and I've entitled this whole series, A Faith That Lasts. Uh, James is very big upon having a faith that works, right? He says a faith without works is dead. Well, I think that we need a faith that works, and a faith that works is a faith that lasts. And James just has truth after truth after truth. We've looked at what James had to say about going through hard times, through trials and tribulations. We've looked at what James had to say about temptations, how to overcome temptations in your life. We've looked at what James, uh, through the Holy Spirit, had to say about how to get through those by using the Bible. And today, we're going to look at something I think it is just right where we live in this society. Uh, Karl Barth one time said, you ought to read the Bible with a newspaper in one hand and a Bible in the other hand. He said, because they're just going to show. I don't think we read newspapers much anymore, but maybe we could say we watch the news and, and the Bible at the same time. But would you all say we have a lack of respect for people today? Do we not see it everywhere? That there's a real lack of respect? Just, and it seems like our society is getting worse with that. We have a lack of respect for each other. Well, James is going to deal with this. And he's going to deal with the problem that they had. And he's going to deal with the, what we normally call the sin of partiality. I'm going to call it today the sin of prejudice. And I want you to know something. It seems today that, that everything is prejudicial. I, I, I like those uh, TV commercials where the guy is teaching these families who just bought houses how not to become their parents. Do you all like that? <laughs> and I think my wife's favorite one is, is when they're at some shopping place and the girl with blue hair walks by and he says we all see it we all see it and then one of them just has to go blue 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 and we have such a problem in our society today that we judge people who have blue or pink hair or we may judge people who have tattoos we may judge people who don't have them uh, it seems like young people think that the older people are kind of nuts and the older people think the younger people are kind of nuts. Uh, Democrats think Republicans are nuts. Republicans think Democrats are nuts. Uh, you know, I, it, would you all kind of see that we live in this cancel society that we live? Do you, do you think it's just kind of crazy? Well, I want you to know something. Just because our society is like that doesn't mean we have to be like that. We do not have to be. And to be honest with you, if you're going to live for God, you won't be like that. One of the things that came out last year a lot, and we saw it on the news every day, and it was just so sickening, is how racial prejudice is still alive in our country. Now, I will say this, from what I was raised as a boy in the 50s and 60s, I think we've made a lot of improvement in our country, but it's obvious that we have a long way to go. And we need to continue uh, trying to, to get over this prejudice that we have in our, in our country. And we all have those prejudices, and the one thing I've noticed about most of us is that naturally we all have prejudices, don't we? We look at somebody who says something and just think, well, that's stupid. And, or we look at somebody with a lot of money and think, boy, they're really cool and people poor, maybe not so much. And It's just ungodly for us to look at somebody else without respect. It's not of God. And James is going to deal with this, but before he does, I want to read a couple of things. For the, this is from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords. He is a great God, the mighty and awesome God. And look at this part. Who shows no partiality and cannot be bribed. And First Chronicles says, Fear the Lord and judge with integrity. The Lord our God does not tolerate perverted justice. Partiality or the taking of bribes. You get the feeling that the Bible's making it very plain that God is not partial, he is not prejudiced. Everybody's to be treated with respect. 
Well, let's stand and read what James has to say in James chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? Did y'all get that? How can you claim to have faith if you favor some over others? For example, he's just giving an example here. So suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry. And another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor, well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? James makes no, no bones about it. If you're partial, if you're showing prejudice, your motives are from evil motives. He said, listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to, to, to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in scriptures. Love your neighbors yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. For the person who keeps all of the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all God's laws. For the same God who said you must not commit adultery also said you must not murder. So if you murder someone but do not commit adultery, you have still broken the law. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you've been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. God's word for God's people. You may be seated. I find it interesting that James almost says that prejudice is maybe a worse level or a same level as murder or adultery. Think about that for a minute. Well, here's just one thing I want to get right off the, the bat. God hates prejudice. All through, I read Old Testament scriptures to you. It says God's not partial. He's not prejudiced. He treats everybody the same. God is, he's not prejudiced. He's not partial. He wants everyone to be treated with respect. Why? Well, the first thing that happens is that prejudice questions God's creation. If you sit around and judge other people, you're questioning God. Who made that person? If you question somebody because of their skin color or where they may be from, are you not questioning the creation of God? Who do you think made people white, black, brown, yellow? Who did that? Do you get the feeling that God likes variety? Do you get the feeling that God said, okay, I'm making all these different people for a reason? Did you ever read in the book of Revelation where it says all nations and all tongues will come and worship before the throne? Folks, if you don't like people of other races, you, get, you don't want to go to heaven because they're all going to be there. And they're all going to be worshiping God. Get over it. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17, verse 26, from one man he created all the nations throughout the whole world. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. I like what Corinthians says, too. He says, for what gives you the right to make such a judgment? What do you have that God hasn't given you? In other words, if you're 
created white or black or brown or Asian or you're from wherever it may be, it wasn't because you chose that. It's because God put you there. Right? And if God put you there, it's okay. You're okay because God made you. And if everything you have is from God, why boast as though it were not a gift? So, one of the reasons why God hates prejudice is because you're, cre you're, you're questioning God's creation. If you start looking at somebody, you may look at somebody who's really intelligent and think, boy, they're really special, and somebody who's maybe not so intelligent, no, they're dumb. No, no, no. God made everybody. They're all to be respected. Prejudice is a sign of ignorance. You know, if you're prejudiced against a group of people or another person because of maybe what political position they hold, because they disagree with you on something, if you treat them with a lack of respect, guess what? Well, we'll get to that. In chapter 3, James says this, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. That's going to make us pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. So, God hates prejudice because it cre his creation is just ignorance not to, but maybe one of the biggest reasons why he hates it is prejudice disobeys the great commandment. You know the great commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And the second one, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, James is going to mention that one. He says, yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law that's found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. And, of course, when Jesus was giving that law, somebody came out and said, well, who's my neighbor? And Jesus gave the parable of the Good Samaritan and showed that any, everyone is your, is your neighbor. Another thing I think you need to just consider is prejudice is a serious sin. It's a serious sin. It's serious if you're here today and you're a bigot. It's serious if you're here today and you don't like another race. It's serious today if there are people that you don't respect. It's serious if because I'm an old white guy, you don't listen to me. Or it's serious if I, as an old white guy, don't want to listen to a younger person. That's a serious sin. Well, you don't believe me? Listen to the Bible. This is James. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. You get the idea that God just hates prejudice by reading the scripture? I do. I do. And we have all kinds of prejudice. There's some who are prejudiced against fat people. Can you imagine that? There's some that are prejudiced against skinny people. There's some people prejudiced against poor people. Some people prejudiced against rich people. It's serious to be prejudiced. And I want you guys to understand, because I know I'm talking to some people here who are struggling with that sin. You've got a group of people, whether it be political, whether it be, be race. And by the way, skin color is not the issue. Sin is. If, if skin color is a problem with you, then you've got a sin problem, okay? But if you have a group that you just can't stand, you don't like, guess what? That's sin. Okay. Now let's get to the practical areas. How do we root out prejudice from our lives? We need to be rooting out prejudice from our lives. How do we do it? I'm going to give you a couple, 
of solutions here. I think the best solution is just learn to see people as God does. You know, I really believe all of us have prejudices. I think there's all of us have people we look at and think, I just don't like that person. Whether it's skin color, whether it's their political beliefs, or whether they believe this, or they say this, or they did this. You need to learn to look at people the way God does. Even people with bad behavior. Right? In Samuel, when Samuel's going to anoint the next king and he finds out it's the son of Jesse that's going to, Jesse's put all of his sons before him. And he doesn't even think enough of David to bring him in from herding sheep. Remember that? He's just a ruddy little boy. And Samuel's looking at physical features, and he's seen some of Jesse's other sons that look pretty impressive. But look what he says. But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. He's talking about one of the older brothers. The Lord doesn't see the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. In other words, we've got to get over some of the outward appearances and get to somebody's heart. Look at what they're made of, their motives. God doesn't excuse sin from anybody, but you know it's God's desire that every person, even the sinners, come to Christ. I can't tell you how many times over my ministry, and it's been a long time now, Somebody said, oh, you might as well not waste your time on that person. They'll never come to church. They'll never receive God. They're too, too sinful. That is not a good thing. There is nothing impossible with God. Amen. So the first thing we need to do is just learn how to see people as God sees them. God sees everybody as precious. He sees every person. You know, sometimes people go, well, children get on my nerves. Well, they apparently did... Jesus' apostles, but what, Jesus, what did Jesus say to them? Bring the children. Jesus treated the children with respect. Uh, every now and then, uh, when we had church, you know, before we built all this stuff out, we had it there in the fellowship hall, and the children's church met right over here, and the doors weren't good, and the sound wasn't good, and it was noisy. You could hear them inside there. And I had some people come up and go, is there something you can do about that? And I said, no, I think it's just beautiful music to my ear to hear them screaming and yelling. I said, because the only other option is we don't have children. And I said, I can't handle that. And, and all. So it's just beautiful and, and, and all. But God sees everybody as being precious and, and, and they need respect. Older people need respect. How many times when you get older did you not get respect? You think, nobody listens to me, nobody cares. Everybody ought to be treated with respect. God's plan to bring people together is the church. The church, I've got to remember step here. The church is, should be a model for how our society ought to be. How we treat each other here ought to be a model for the world. People ought to be able to come into this place and go, God's here. And you know how they're going to say God's here? By how they're treated. By how they're treated. I love Galatians and I love this passage. For you all are children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ. I put it on new clothes. Now listen to this. There's no longer Jew nor Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You got a problem with race? In Christ, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. 
You got a problem with social economic status? There's not slave or free. You got a problem with women? You got a problem with men? There's neither male nor female. That is exactly what's been Paul says. There's no longer Jew nor Gentile, slave or free, male or female. And we see this in our society today. We see people judging people on race. And slave would have been the poor people in, in, in James' day versus the free. We, don't, we have people who judge on socioeconomic status. That's not to happen. Or male or female. And I guarantee you today, there are some women who hate men and there are some men who hate women. Can't do that. Can't do it. We're all to be respected. How should you look at yourself? Well, I know that we're all Americans and most of us here are very proud to be Americans. But truthfully, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, you should look at yourself as a child of God. You know, every morning when I wake up, I shouldn't look in the mirror and say, well, there's an old white man here. Or an uh, old white man needs to lose a little weight, maybe. You know? I need to look at myself first and say, I'm a child of God. And I'm part of the family of God. And I need to treat everybody like they could be the family of God or they are part of the family of God. And let me just say some things. Some of y'all may not like this, but I don't care. I'm an old white guy. <laughs> You know, as a Christian, I have more in common with a little girl in Africa or in Asia who's a Christian than I do another old white guy in America. Do you know that? I've been over to Africa. I've been there. And I have more in common with those folks in that church than I do with a lot of people around here. You see, we become a family of God. And that family of God extends to all cultures and to all things. And if you're part of the family of God, you don't worry about being an American first or white first or black first or brown first or yellow first. You, you worry about being part of the family of God. Now that's good Bible. It may not be what our culture wants to hear today, but that's good Bible. We worry about being part of the family of God. I, I had a good friend, and this was a, another church. And he was raised very prejudiced. And God really did a work on him on that. He and, he and I were good friends. We talked a lot. He was in the church, one of my deacons. And God worked on him so much. He had a beautiful teenage girl. He said, God has convicted me of something. And he said, one of my greatest nightmares used to be that she might want to date and marry a black guy. He said, but I've come to the conclusion, and God's worked on me on this. He said, I would rather her marry a spirit-filled black guy than a lost or, or nominal Christian white guy. Now that's how we have to look at things. We have to look at things not through color, not through gender, not through economic status. We have to look at things through God's eyes and we have to look at it that we're part of the family of God. And being part of the family of God, we treat everyone with respect. Well, that's the word of the Lord. That's the word that James had for us today. I hope you'll hear it. Like James said, I hope you'll not be hearers only, but doers of the Word of God. Would you pray with me? Here at the end of the service, we always like to try and pray for those who are Christians, maybe a recommitment each week. And if you've never received Christ, maybe this is the time to do it. Father God, Thank you for making me who I am. 
Thank you for giving me this race that I am. Thank you for all the economic things, whether they're great or little that you give to me. Thank you for what race you've made me. Thank you for the parents you gave me. Thank you for the upbringing I've, 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 I've had. Lord, I realize you've made me just like you want me. But I realize in order to be who I need to be, I need to be committed completely to Jesus Christ. I thank you for sending Jesus and that he died on the cross and taught me how to live. And so right now, I ask for forgiveness of my sins. I ask for forgiveness when I'm partial, when I'm prejudiced, when I look at other people with disrespect. Forgive me for that sin. Forgive me for all my other sins, Lord. And I ask at this time that Jesus become very real to me, that he comes into my heart and I feel him in a new, refreshing way. I commit right now that I'm going to leave here and I'm going to live for Jesus and I'm going to be part of his, your family from now on. And I pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen.